Good morning, puckers. Don't worry, Dave Koken will be back. I'm Lawrence Presman. We are watching Puck Time. Carmine Bianco, Andrew McGinnis, and Dave Koken joining us. Welcome, everybody. Backdoor cover, Cameron Hayer, the sports group. Carmine Bianco in the form as well. Mixed by post chance. What's up, dude? Nate, Frank, Bud. Lots of love, everybody. Ah, Dave, outstanding weekend, brother. Four and O Saturday. How did you do yesterday? Two and one uh, on the uh, NFL. I lost a baseball game. Uh, I had the uh, Buffalo Bills, which, well, I'll take that pass interference call at the end of the game. That kind of helped. I uh, lost with Dallas, had a winner on the total, which was a free play in the Houston-Pittsburgh game. And the 4-0 and on Saturday in college, so we're up to 8-1 and on the season now. And uh, we'll try and add to that this week. It's crazy. Based on that division that uh, the Rams are in, uh, they could miss the playoff because of an extremely bad pass interference call. Andrew McGinnis, how did you do this weekend? It was a so-so weekend, uh, to be quite honest with you, yesterday. Um... You know, I debated for a long, long time. Do I go Falcons first half or do I go full game? Mm. And, uh, you know, that's one of the ones. It's a fool me once, you know, shame on you. Fool me once, fool me twice, shame on me. And uh, that was actually my first time betting on the Falcons this weekend. But uh, other than that, uh, I was a good winner. I had the Bills. They also made me sweat it out. Uh, but UFC winner, I had Adesanya uh, by KO or TKO. Uh, now moves the uh, 4% run to 14-2 and two in the UFC. So wow. as far as UFC goes and uh, a couple different sports that I'm not capping a lot, uh, going really well. Yeah, me too. I had him as well. 6-0 uh, and o, uh, in UFC. And man, it was a fun fight. He looked great. Carmine, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Um... Two and one in football yesterday, a 5% winner uh, with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Cleveland was doing the old Cleveland things. Uh, but they're, they've got a good team. They've got a good offensive team there. They just need to uh, – their offensive line is so much better now uh, than it was last year. Uh, they're doing things a little bit better. And, and defensively, they, uh, they play extremely well. I think they had three or four picks yesterday, which was great. Also had the Bills. I'm perfectly happy with that offensive call. But <laughs> – as a Bills fan, I'll tell you this. Like, uh, yeah, they're 0-3. Uh, sorry, they're 3-0, but you look at it, okay, it's the Jets. They beat the Jets. They beat Miami. Um, they probably should have lost yesterday's game. They haven't learned to win a game uh, from start to finish against a quality squad. Uh, uh, when you're up 28-3 to at home. Yeah, uh, I know. No, no fans or not, I don't care. You have to win these games, and that that falls on the coaching staff. That's what it, with Atlanta. You look at Atlanta. You look at uh, you know the game uh, that that Dallas game uh, two weeks ago. You need to uh, learn to um, uh, how to play a fourth quarter. It cost San Fran a Super Bowl last year. Yeah. So uh, it's it's one of those things. But two and one Saturday, one one and one in football, and I'm telling you. It's one of those weird things. Uh, BYU, uh, with the ball at the two-yard line with about a minute 20 left, they tried to go for the TD, which would have put the game over the total against Troy. Uh, on, and the guy was stopped short at the one-yard line, and then they took three knees and ended the game. <laughs> and it's just, what do you do, right? So it would have been a 2-0 a, a in one day instead it was a 1-1 one, one in one day. So that's pretty much it. Uh, and there's a guy in chat. Before I throw it back to Lawrence, uh, Jay Vega, I'm, I'm sorry you lost your free parlay that we gave out on the show. Uh, but my plays over the last three weeks have been on fire. So um, what do you want me to do? There you go. Yeah. That's two what you want me to do is in uh, one minute. Uh, guys, Carmine has a 5% play in hockey tonight. Make sure to get it. It's $9 Monday. 5% play these are very rare plays especially for him uh so make sure to uh get that play dave tampa bay dallas game six uh what do we got well i mean i tampa's supposed to win <laughs> but, but they were supposed to win the last game too and and this this dallas team i'm telling you man they I don't know, nobody uses the word moxie anymore i'll use it here that team's got a lot of moxie because they just, they've been outplayed in so many games and yet they found ways to hang in there. And I, I 
you know, they're down one nothing. All right, well, that's that's hardly the end of the game. They, they tie it up. When they got down two to one, it's like, okay, well, that that's it. That's it. Tampa's going to hold on and win the game. Probably pull away. I, I actually, I thought, yeah, Tampa's going to get him now. So I got that completely wrong. Uh, and then, I, I, fortunately, I wasn't betting in game uh, because I, I'd have lost. All I can say tonight is um, Tampa's supposed to win, but I can't lay the price. Uh, you know, I've gotten burned once in this series doing that, and I'm not going to do it again. And on the total, I, I certainly think over is the right play. But it's it's five with the over juice to minus one forty. Yeah, minus one forty. I I just can't lay that on a total. Mm. I I'd ra- I'd honestly, I'd rather give me five and a half, uh, even money, and I okay I'll go for that. But I'm not laying forty cents of juice when six goals is what I need regardless. <laughs> right. He's Dave Koken. Ah, uh, four. And oh, a CFB Saturday, eight and one on the season, eight and one. We told you guys all along he was the man to play in college football, and he's proven us right. Uh, Carm, I'll go to you. I know you got your five percent play up, so I, you don't want to give yeah, it no, away. But it's, uh, it's all good. I actually have some player props uh, for today. But as Dave said, uh, you know Tampa's supposed to win, but they were supposed to win game five, and and watching that game. I literally wanted to, I, I was cheering for Tampa and o- OT. I had the over five in that game uh, just because I saw enough in game four that uh, it said to me that, you know, I should probably start looking at the uh, over in a couple of games or whatever, or at least in the closeout game, but it didn't close out. Uh, I was cheering for Tampa because I want in the fight, because it would close off my uh, futures bet, but also I wanted to see the Stanley Cup. You know what I mean? Uh, it's in the building. You want to see it uh, raise, right? So uh, whether we see it uh, today or whether we see it in game seven remains to be seen. We'll see how the, tonight's game goes. As far as player props, I've got four of them. Tyler, uh, Tyler Sagan, over uh, half an assist. So he has to get one assist tonight. A couple assists last game. Uh, he's That line with Perry just seems to be getting under the skin of Tampa Bay and if they can do it again tonight, this might go seven games. That's plus 165 on that uh, on that Tyler Sagan over half an assist tonight. Kucherov to score any time tonight, plus 175. The guy's only got five or six goals in the playoffs, but he's got like 15 or 16 assists, and it seems like every time this guy's got the puck in the offensive zone, uh, he's getting a shot on net. He's getting a quality shot, and it, it's going to go in. So uh, plus 175 to score tonight. If you like Tampa Bay and you think Tampa Bay is going to win tonight, he's probably going to be a big part of it. Uh, Jamie Ben under two and a half shots on goal. Uh, five, uh, two shots in three of them, three shots in the other two, one of them being, uh, I think, an OT game. Uh, it, it's just sort of the same thing. His ice time has been up and down, 20 minutes, 16 minutes, 11 minutes, and then the two overtime games. Obviously, he put in more minutes uh, with a double overtime but under two and a half shots there. And then my final stat is the plus minus, which I've been betting throughout these playoffs. And I really like this one again is Victor head over plus a half. So he has to be a, uh, a positive plus minus at the end of this game. And that's plus 130 on your money. There you go. There's Carmine Bianco. Uh, guys, thanks for staying with us all year. Johnny Outlaw, Jay Vega, Hector. Hector, I let you down with my 5% plays this weekend. I apologize. Nice to see you, Jared, West Coast. Uh, Andrew McGinnis, what do you like in this one? It's, you know, it's funny like, hearing, uh, you know, Tampa's supposed to win. I, I look at it like, you know, Dallas is supposed to lose, and they have been supposed to lose for the past several series, you know. And uh, I think, like, Dave and I have both been kind of uh, reiterating the same thing, where it's like they haven't really been standing out and making us all run to the window to bet them. Uh, but something about this team is making us, you know, a little bit on our edge now, um, thinking about how they're just sticking around. Uh, they have not had an easy playoffs. They have not had an easy run to the Stanley Cup final. Um, and if they somehow do win this, it's going to be a hell of a story. Um, I, I just think it's hard It's hard to imagine. I've been saying I like Dallas at an underdog price throughout this series because of the number we were getting. But in this spot now, after the overtimes, after the long games, it just seemed to me – that uh, it, it's it's just Dallas's series that's just going to get harder and harder the farther it goes, 
and it's because of the options that Tampa Bay has. Um, one thing that I was impressed with, though, guys, because the media, a lot of people all over social media have really, really thrown some bad thoughts about Pavelski and Perry. And those are the guys that step up. And I've mentioned that it was the depth that was scoring for Dallas. So we see some guys that actually are getting some pay, you know, some paydays finally starting to put the puck in the net for, for Dallas. So that's a strong point. You know, but I, I think, again, the, the bigger that these games get, uh, the more it's going to be about the options. And uh, I just think that the more that we're seeing that from Tampa Bay, uh, I, I finally started to see some depth from this team. And when you start seeing that, uh, I think the series is over. When the third line is creating chances, uh, when Tyler Johnson's looking good again, uh, and he's not even a third line or a secondary guy, when he's looking good, um, you know, it, it's Tampa's game. I think they win tonight. Unfortunately, I've been riding Dallas for a while now and, and saying – Kind of been on their uh, on their bandwagon, but uh, you know, I, I was at a really 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 uh, nice Airbnb pres over the weekend. We had a bunch of us over. Yep. Some of my friends finally got back from the states. Uh, they were in university and they couldn't stay because um, of the quarantine and stuff. And they're finally back. And a lot of hockey fans. And we were waiting for the UFC fights to come on. And they said, "Geez, you know, is that game still going on? Like we thought Tampa Bay would have wrapped it up. You know, the second that game went to OT, everyone thought it was just Tampa Bay's game." Um, so hats off to Dallas, but I think uh, Tampa Bay takes it. Um, but guys, somebody just mentioned to me in the, in the chat box about uh, the Falcons, kind of just a little bit of a jab or, or an advice saying, hey, don't bet this Falcons team, bet the team total. And that's what I say uh, for this game. If you like either team, um, I, think, I, I literally think the safer bet is taking the team total. Uh, Tampa Bay, you have to lay a decent price here, but you're laying a decent price for them to win, guys. Yeah. Minus 147 uh, at my shop here is what I'm seeing for the over two and a half goals. If Tampa Bay wins this hockey game, they are getting three goals. Uh, and I feel much more comfortable about that bet than I do about taking them to win the game. You know, I think that that could be uh, a safe ticket here. As far as the prop wagers go, I really like what Carmine was saying about Victor Hedman. Uh, him and I have been both on the same page with it. Uh, these usually stay around two and a half and the odds aren't too bad with it. Uh, I'm going a little bit safer and, you know, that this isn't too much of a splash here with the goal scores, but I'm getting plus 175, Carm, with both Kucherov and Point. I think one of them scores a goal. Uh, if at least one of them scores a goal, you're getting 0.75 units. You know, so that, that's kind of the way I look at it. You can bet those guys, and I think you're going to make, make money uh, either way. And then I think I'm taking one flyer here with goal scoring props. Uh, it's a plus 500 on Jason Dickinson. This guy, uh, people are going to laugh at me taking that, but uh, it's one of those ones where... Dallas is, is going to have to show up, you know, not just from their big guns again. Some random guy's going to have to score, and he's been buzzing around. He looked good last game. And at a plus 500, you know, I'll toss uh, 0.25 units on it and, and uh, see what he does for me. Andrew McGinnis, great stuff, guys. Uh, everybody, I don't know if this is going to be the last show or not. Who knows? Uh, I'm not going to make a big to-do. Uh, if it is, we'll see you in the new year. Uh, or hopefully in December, but uh, my sources are telling me more like January. Yeah. Um, loved it. Love doing somebody this asked, with you. Uh, Go ahead. Somebody asked about Con, Con Smythe. Con Smythe. Uh, well, Head, Headman. Headman or Vasa? Yeah, it, it, if, well, if uh, Tampa wins, it's, it, it's got to be one of two. It's going to be either Kucherov, who uh, leads in scoring, or Headman, the second highest uh, D. I always put more value on a defense yeah. uh, on a D man than I do It'll on a be forward. Edmund. That's just the way it is. And if it, if so. Dallas wins in seven, Ben, it's got to be got to be Hudobin, right? Oh, um, uh, that, yeah, yeah, it's for just sure. got to be. For sure. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the well, times, though, it, it's really biased based off the winning game. Yeah, I know. Like if uh, if Kucherov goes out here and has a big game tonight, he'll get it. If Hedman looks strong, he has a lot of shots on goal and plays a great game, he'll get it. If Vasilevsky steals the game somehow. He could potentially get it. So I, I think that they do a bad job of be, the, even the analyst being very biased of the game that, that won well, it for them. Yeah, you you know, it, that? It's kind of, yeah I, I kind of do. But it really falls into that theory. And we talk about this in sports betting all the time, is that bettors have a tendency to remember only the last thing they saw. Mm. And yeah. That's why you get overreactions to games and one result all the time uh, in, uh, in football or, or basketball. Um, so I think that there's an extension of that to uh, voting uh, for an award like the Con Smythe, where the thing that stands out is what happened in the yeah. most recent game, and everybody forgets what happened earlier. Yeah, they're like poker players, man. They're prisoners of the moment. They only remember the very last thing that happened to them as far as a bad beat usually. 
But uh, in speaking of Kudobin, he's one of only, I think, Dave, you saw, I don't know if you saw this, he's only one of five goalies to have ever faced 700 shots in the uh, playoffs. That's a ton of rubber, let me tell you. I think he's established uh, okay. his credentials as a number one goalie. We talked about uh, Victor Hedman's shots, Preds. I just want to mention, I forgot real quick. Uh, Carmine has talked about not just the team shots on goal, but the combined yeah. for both teams. It's at 57 and a half. Uh, first of all, I think it's actually too low for the Dallas Stars at 26 and a half. Uh, but l- let's just say Tampa Bay is up. You know, it's 3 2, three minutes to go in, in the third period. There's going to be quality shots taken by Dallas, but we'll, let's face it, there's going to be just rapid fire everything you can at the net. You know, and, and, and those are shots. Let's say there's an empty netter goal uh, from Tampa Bay. That still counts as a shot. You know, and in third period, it's going to be a bunch. So 57 and a half is the, is the, uh, and, and, you know, I'm not playing a side in this one. I'm playing those totals. I'm playing the team totals, and I'm playing those shot props. I'll just say that that's, that's my card here with this game. You know, I posted a picture, and I'm going to throw this at Prez, and then uh, you can do whatever you want with it. I posted a picture during the overtime of Game 5, and it was two pictures, one of the Stanley Cup and one of Stanley Roper from Three's Company. I'm like, which Stanley are we going to see tonight? Prez, which one? The Stanley Cup. Because I'm ready to uh, ride my Peloton during this time period uh, every day. Uh, Guys, that's it. We'll see you either in two days or two months, whatever it is. Much love from all of us for being part of Puck Time and part of the Wager Talk family. Uh, We love you guys all so much. We really enjoy it. Uh, I'm not going to get sentimental. Good luck. Kick ass tonight. And we'll see you in either two days or three months. Be well, everybody. Good luck, boys.